What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and today I'm super excited to bring you the third video in my TikTok ads crash course. Now today I'm basically going to be going step by step on how to launch an ad. I'm literally just going to pick a product, show you exactly how I would like essentially launch it on TikTok and then I'm basically just going to tell you everything that's been working for me so far as far as like ad setup goes and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that you'll get a ton of value out of this video and let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so I just want to give a quick update on how the TikTok ads are performing. Um, so I actually hit my, uh, I hit a new personal best yesterday as far as revenue goes. Um, I'll go ahead and refresh this for you. This is my main store. And then I'm also starting a TikTok store completely from scratch, only using TikTok ads, just Facebook for retargeting. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how I've grown this store um, and just how it's doing so far. So as you can see, it's not like crazy. I've kind of like not been super, super aggressive scaling this store uh, just because I want to get everything in place before I really ramp it up. <clears throat> but yeah, as you can see, like 33K first month and we're not even two thirds of the way done with the month so far. So honestly, not bad um, for just experimenting three, four weeks into TikTok ads. Um, I would say I'm really pleased with my results so far and uh, let's hope they just continue getting better. All right, so basically most of this video is just going to be inside my TikTok ads manager, which as you can see, that's where we're at right now. So I'm essentially just going to be creating an advertisement pretending that I'm selling a fidget spinner. I'm not selling a fidget spinner because this is not 2016, but um, yeah, just for example purposes. So let's go ahead and click create and hop into the um, the campaign tutorial i guess um all right so obviously like right here we're just going to want to aim for conversions because we're trying to get sales for our fidget spinner so we can just name this campaign fidget spinner and then go ahead and click continue for budget i don't do budget there's no like cbo's with tiktok however um budget is like if you had a hundred ad sets and you didn't want to spend more than like five thousand dollars a day on your campaign then you could put a budget, but yeah, I don't touch that. And I also have not played around with a split test yet, but um, I would definitely love to at some point. Cool. So we're just going to go ahead and edit our ad group, which is basically just like an ad set on Facebook. So one of the first things is just selecting your placement. So TikTok actually owns like a bunch of advertising platforms, which I didn't know, but essentially we're only going to want to use TikTok. Um, because most of these are only in like weird countries like India and Japan um, and then newsfeed like yeah I just I don't want to use that it doesn't really spend anyway um, so yeah we're just going to go ahead and put like an example URL so we'll do like www.store.com slash fidget spinner sweet I totally butchered that yeah, you know what I mean. It's obviously just for example purposes. Um, as far as the pixel goes, we can just select that pixel that we made in the last video. And then for the event, we're going to want to do place an order or complete payment, whatever you want to call it. For the display name, um, we're just going to want to put like either your store name or your product name. Um, so either of those work. Personally, the store name seems to do better when I've tested it. But since I don't really have a store name, um, I'm just going to write spinner. So profile image, that's basically just like your brand logo. Um, so I didn't go through all the trouble of creating a logo for this fidget spinner store, but I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out. So ad category, this is essentially just like what you're selling. Um, to my like knowledge and my testing, it doesn't have like a huge impact on any like delivery or anything like that of your ads. Um, but it is kind of hard to find like the right category. Like what do you, what do you categorize a fidget spinner of? I don't really know. Um, we're just going to do adult products. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is our ad tag. So this is essentially where you just describe your product and or your niche in as many terms as possible. Now you don't necessarily need to do as many terms as possible. It lets you do anywhere between like one and 20 ad tags but personally what I found is that if you do 20 ad tags 
it turns out a lot better than if you only do a couple. So ad tags for this product, um, you can maybe do like obviously like fidget spinner. You could do like fidget toy. You could do like teen. You could do like trendy. Um, maybe like distraction, ADHD, something like that. It's really hard to think of tags, honestly. So what I've been doing recently is using a website called Keyword Generator. Well, it's not what the website's called. The website is called A-H-R-E-F-S. I don't know how to say that, but essentially if you just search up a keyword like fidget spinner, for example, it's going to bring up like other related terms that people search up on Google when they're looking up that product. So for this, you could do like fidget spinner tricks. You could do like, no, honestly, a lot of these actually contain the term, um, which is too bad. A lot of times it'll just like go find like um, completely different terms like toys to make your distractions ease. I don't really know, honestly. But yeah, so essentially we could just look up like different terms for this. So we could look up like fidget cube and just keep trying to generate more terms that we can use for our ad tags. All right, so I basically just looked through a couple more terms, um, found out some more. Um, I'll explain or you're going to understand in the next like essentially portion of creating this ad while it shows like PlayStation and gaming and stuff like that. But anyway, it's not a huge deal if you don't have 20 tags. However, it's a good best practice, I would say. Um, but I've still had some ads do very well with like four tags. 12 tags, stuff like that. It's not necessarily gonna make or break you, but from my experience, it does help to have more tags. So automated creative is essentially just where TikTok will essentially just pick the best ad that you give it. So it recommends that you give it at least 10 combinations of creatives and call to actions and ad text. So I don't, I always have this checked personally, but I don't normally give it 10 combinations of creatives or ad text or anything like that. However, the reason why I recommend that you check it is if you want to change this and you want to have like an automated creative, if you want to just like try that out with giving it a bunch of like creatives and stuff like that, then you have to like go back again and create like a whole new ad set and stuff like that. You can't just duplicate an ad set and then turn on automated creative. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but moral of the story is I would just go ahead and check this, even if you're not going to do like a lot of ads and creatives and stuff like that um, for the intended purpose of automated creative. So targeting the first thing, this is just like your lookalike audiences or custom audiences and stuff like that. Uh, personally, I would recommend that you just create a look, or sorry, a custom audience for all the people that click on your ads and then just exclude that. That way they're not like constantly targeted again and again and again um, when they're already gonna be hit by like your Facebook retargeting and stuff. Um, and also that way like if anyone were, was to buy your product and have any negative feedback, then they couldn't like put that because they wouldn't be targeted by that advertisement. So location, um, the locations that you're gonna have access to really depends on your ad account. This personal one only has US and Australia available for like um, just like big five placements. I have another ad account that has all of them. So it's kind of weird. Actually, it doesn't have New Zealand. But anyway, um, if you are going to be doing anything other than the United States, then make sure that you have a currency converter because TikTok will actually like flag your landing page and disapprove your ad if you don't and you're targeting a company, sorry, you're targeting a country that your currency is not in. So gender, age, stuff like that, I would just leave this blank until you get a chance to test it out. If you are launching your first ad, um, then you can make an educated guess. Like if you don't think a fidget spinner is gonna be bought by a 54 year old, then yeah, you could do like 13 through 17 or 13 through 24 or something. But yeah, for the most part, I just leave all this blank, um, including the interest. So yeah, I'm not really going to go over interest right now because that's just the same thing. Um, so I believe there's 46 interests on the platform right now. It was a little wrong in my last video, but um, 
I do recommend that like once you test out your ads and creatives and stuff like that, you go ahead and test some interests. But yeah, again, right now I really wouldn't worry about it. Not for your first ad at least. And personally, I found that not touching interests at all normally has a better result. Um, I've scaled some interests pretty well, but for the most part, no targeting at all is what's doing well for me. So as far as the daily budget goes, you're going to have to be required to put a minimum of $20, which is what I normally do anyway, just for testing. So that works out well for me. Um, as far as like the day partying and stuff like that, that's essentially just when your ad is going to be run. So I, I don't necessarily have like a solid conclusion right now when it comes to this, but what's been working really well for me as far as scaling goes is having one ad that's running all day and essentially that ad is going to spend all of its money within like the first couple hours of the morning um if it's standard delivery which we'll talk about in a second and it may take it like up until like i would say noon or so but it's probably not going to take any longer than that to spend all of its budget however um i normally try to just duplicate that so i'll have one running all day and then I'll have one running at 17 through 24. So essentially that's going to be, um, in Eastern time at least, that's going to be, I believe it's going to be like six through uh, six through midnight. Um, that may be completely wrong, but I, I think that's right. And essentially what that's going to do is just make sure that your ad is just getting shown all day. And it's also going to allow you to spend twice as much money in doing so. So just a general rule of thumb, um, or at least from what I've figured out so far, all day is fine. Like it's not going to get you bad results, but if you really want to tone down on like this specific CPA, which is cost per acquisition of your advertisements, then I would go in your Google analytics and see when people are buying from you the most. For me, I found out it was around noon Eastern time and it was also peaking around like I would say like seven to eight o'clock at night. So if you want, like I haven't done this so far, but you could like do this kind of thing so that you're just targeting those times or you could just select the entire thing and let it run like simultaneously. All right, so as far as your optimization goal, as long as you're trying to get sales from your ad, just leave that. Also leave this. Um, if you change it to optimize clicks, it's probably gonna screw up because it did that for me. Um, and then. As far as your big goes, I would put like your target CPA. So um, again, CPA is just cost per acquisition. So the the amount that you want to pay for a purchase. Um, most like Facebook, they recommend you put like your maximum CPA. Um, so for example, if you add an $8 margin on a product, meaning you make $8 profit on a sale, then your max CPA would be eight dollars however that would leave you with no profit so let's say you want a four dollar purchase so that you would make four dollars profit on every sale that means your bid would be four dollars all right so as far as delivery type goes i normally tend to go towards accelerated delivery but in my opinion accelerated delivery is better for like your top performing ad sets and products and stuff like that um, if you do have like some ads that seem to do all right, but they're not like like clear and obvious winners, then I would go with standard delivery. Um, I'm just using accelerated delivery because it has the, it's essentially just going to spend a lot quicker. And it's also going, at least in my experience, if you have a solid winner, it's going to get you cheaper purchases. Now, I do want to say that like I'm, I'm still learning the platform and take everything I say with a grain of salt, but I'm doing my best to learn. And I, I think that I have found that accelerated delivery works better than standard delivery. All right. So for some reason, TikTok did not like my fidget spinner ads. So I just had to go and find a product that I sold in the past that didn't have a watermark on the ad. So um, yeah, I totally just changed my product on there, but it's okay. So essentially you guys can just kind of see right now, um, the TikTok is very, very glitchy. Like I, I literally spent like 15 minutes trying to upload this ad. I know that you didn't see that. There's probably a good thing, but there's also this like this big gray box on the top. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, I believe that's just a glitch with the preview. If I'm correct, I really hope I'm correct. Um, 
But yeah, so um, as you can see, it basically just pops up um, and it says the sale and then it says a call to action. That's kind of how I just format all of my advertisements. The only difference between this and most of the other ads that I run on TikTok is that this one is a, it's a one by one ratio technically, but it's a 16 by nine because I basically just put the video in InShot and then I made the background blurred so that it's not black. Because if you just upload a one by one video in TikTok, you're allowed to do that. However, this background is going to be black and it's also just not going to look that professional because the ad by default is going to be like down here. Um, so essentially, if you go on InShot, you can just like move it up so that it's not cut off by the description and stuff like that, which I think just looks a lot better. So essentially what's been working for me as far as creatives go is roughly like 40 second videos that are full 16 by 9, which means the entire video is 16 by 9. Um, and then really just the same text, like just super, super basic one saying the sale, one saying a call to action. And that's essentially it. I mean, I can't necessarily give you like the exact, um, ads that are working well for me, but that that's the format that I follow that's been working really well. So as far as ad copy goes, this is a little tough because TikTok is completely different than Facebook as far as ad copy goes. Um, but generally I follow a structure, something like this. So let's pretend we're still selling the fidget spinner. I would just write fidget spinner. Now 50% off. Um, and then I would just do like a call to action. I would do like shop now. And then essentially what I would do is just go, you can't do emojis. TikTok is actually very, very, very picky when it comes to the ads that they allow. So instead of emojis, what I've been doing recently is just copying and pasting an arrow. So essentially what you can do is just go on Google and type copy and paste arrow. And it's going to show you a website that looks something like this. So essentially all we got to do is just come here and get some arrows that are pointing down. So we can just use this guy and then we'll go back to TikTok ads and we'll go ahead and paste those arrows. So as you can see, this is our ad copy. It's really, I'll just show you how long you can do this ad copy. So we did not have much text left and we literally only wrote a couple of words. So definitely completely different than Facebook in that regard, but I'll essentially just show you guys right here as you can see there's like a shop now button and then it actually has like music i'm not really sure why it does that and then there's your ad copy with the arrows that we just pasted now again this is just a complete example but i hope that it helps you understand how to create a tiktok ad step by step and also what's working for me as far as ad setup goes and creatives all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you got a ton of value out of it and i really hope that you guys are enjoying these tiktok ads crash courses now i really think that even if you can't apply this information immediately um, that you should just keep trying to get into TikTok ads and that you should watch these videos and just absorb and be ready for when you do get the opportunity to run ads. It's honestly stupid how profitable TikTok ads are for me right now. Um, and who knows how long it's going to be that good. So just keep applying, keep trying to get in. And once you do, it's 100% worth it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Keep an eye out for the next video, which may or may not be the last video in this tutorial series, and I will see you guys then. Have an awesome day. I'm out. <laughs>